It is a bit surprising, but it's said that the bells that are rung at prayers are the testicles. The ropes attached to it are the male genitalia. You might not want to remember this too much when you actually visit, but... And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. If you're hoping to visit Japan someday, I bet you'd like to visit some of the beautiful shrines. Shrines are where the Shinto gods are worshipped, and these shrines can be seen all over Japan. However, what is Shinto exactly? How is it different from other religions? So today, I'll talk about the five facts many people might not know about Shintoism, so you can deepen your understanding about this religion. The five facts will get more and more interesting towards the end, so I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. Learning about Shinto will not only help you to deepen your understanding towards Japanese history and culture, but you will also get to know more about the values of Japanese people and their ways of thinking. Please let me know in the comments if you have any other questions after watching this video. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel in Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. One, there's no clear definition of Shinto. The first one is already really surprising, isn't it? In general, the definition of Shinto is ancient and unique Japanese beliefs. But this doesn't really explain anything, does it? Like, how ancient is it? No one knows. Some say it has been around from the beginning of the Jomon period, while others date it much later in the Yayoi period. And does unique mean that it has never been affected by foreign cultures? No, that's not true. In the first place, Shinto differs in many aspects between the ceremonial forms practiced at the imperial court and those practiced by the commoners at shrines around the country. Of course, every religion has changed through time and regions. The crucial difference between other religions and Shinto, however, is that there are no founders or scriptures. Shinto, in conclusion, is a religion that originated spontaneously in small countries throughout Japan in ancient times, and was gradually integrated with the development of the Yamato administration, the first unified dynasty, and in the process was completed by incorporating foreign elements. How can a religion without any founders or scriptures be brought down to this day? The answer is by mythology and rituals at shrines. They do not teach anything specific, but the sense of awe and gratitude we feel towards gods when we experience these events is the Shinto value. I bet everything about Shinto is ambiguous and irritating, but this ambiguity is what expresses the inherent profoundness of Shintoism and Japanese culture. 2. Kojiki and Nihon Shoki have different content. For those of you who already know about Shinto, you might have thought listening to the first fact about there are no scriptures. Wait, doesn't Japan have the two books about the Shinto legends? Kojiki and Nihon Shoki? It is true that they are sometimes described as if they are scriptures, but strictly speaking, these two books are historical documents, and they do not contain any Shinto doctrines. But then why are there two books in the first place? This is because these two books are written for different purposes, and the content is actually different. Kojiki was compiled by the order of the emperor in 712, by a person who was good at memorization, who spent four months listening to and memorizing various traditions. Nihon Shoki was also started by the same emperor, but this was compiled in 720, taking about 40 years of work by a large group of people. In conclusion, Kojiki is a story written to unify domestic mythology, and Nihon Shoki is a history book written for foreign countries, for Japan to be recognized as an independent nation. Therefore, there are the following differences. 1. The written language, Japanese or kanji. 2. The length of the content, 3 or 30 volumes. 3. The content, heroic or historical. 
Because the international language of ancient East Asia was Chinese, Nihonshoki was written in Chinese. But Kojiki was written for the domestic audience using Japanese. Strictly speaking, Kojiki uses Chinese kanji characters too. But it was to express the Japanese pronunciations because Japan at that time still did not have its original letters. Also, Nihonshoki has 10 times the volume compared to Kojiki. This is because Nihonshoki was a historical document intended for the outside world. And they wanted to increase its authority by writing about Japanese history as long and carefully as possible. Finally, while Nihonshoki was written in the style of an encyclopedia of historical events, Kojiki was written for the purpose of unifying the people of the country under a regime of the administration. So it was written as a heroic tale. 3. There are 8 million gods Shinto is a polytheistic religion that believes in the existence of God in all phenomena. By everything, I mean everything. Not only the gods of nature like the sea, earth, wind, and thunder, but also the gods of the kitchen and toilets in the house, as well as the gods of things without form like navigation, development, and luck. What's surprising is that gods of foreign countries, and sometimes even people, are worshipped as gods. For example, there are shrines dedicated to the famous military commanders like Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Ieyasu. The word Yaoyorozu, 8 million, means many, and doesn't mean that there are exactly 8 million gods. However, if we believe that there is a god for literally everything, there may rather be more than 8 million gods. But why are there so many gods in Shinto? It is largely due to the fact that it is a religion that integrates myths that were believed in different places in Japan. However, I personally believe that it was a teaching to appreciate and treat all things with care. Japan is an island nation surrounded by the sea, with nearly 70% of its land covered by mountains and then prone to natural disasters. Resources are scarce, and people must work together in order to survive the frequent earthquakes, typhoons, and volcanic eruptions. I think that by believing that they were living in an environment surrounded by gods, they were grateful for everything and tried to live humbly. So now you've understood that there are many, many gods. But there is actually a certain god that is considered the supreme deity. She is the sun goddess, Amaterasu. For those of you who immediately imagined Itachi, we are now friends. The members of the imperial family that exist in Japan even today are believed to be the descendants of this goddess. There are many other great gods, such as Izanagi, Izanami, Sano, and Tsukuyomi that you may have heard of. It'll take a whole other video to explain everything, so maybe in another occasion. 4. Children are gifts from God until the age of 7. As I explained earlier, it is believed that the Shinto religion was passed down through rituals. To name just a few of the typical life rituals, Oshitiya, celebration of the seventh night after birth. Omiyamaidi, first shrine visit. Shigo-san, celebration of turning three, five, and seven years old. Jusan-maidi, celebration of turning 13 years old. Coming of age ceremony, celebration of turning 20 years old. Prayer for safe delivery and child raising. Kanleki, 60th birthday. If you list them out like this, you will notice that most of the rituals are for children. There are actually a total of nine rituals for every child. This is because in Shintoism, it is believed that children under the age of seven are entrusted by God. This may be difficult to understand, but it basically means to take good care of your children as if they are gods. In the past, more than half of the children died before they can turn seven years old. Some theories suggest that the people at the time were trying to lessen their grief by assuming that children are closer to God, so their bodies and souls are more likely separated. By the way, we have some videos of us actually celebrating some of the children's rituals, so if you're interested, I hope you can check them out too. 5. Shinto shrines represent a woman's womb. A shrine is a place where the Shinto deities are enshrined. 
You have probably seen or heard of famous shrines such as Fushimi Inari Taisha in Kyoto or Itsukushima Jinja Shrine in Hiroshima. However, did you know that some theories suggest that Shinto shrines represent a woman's womb? As evidence of this, the names of each place and object in the shrine represent the female organs and womb. 1. The gates represent a woman's legs. 2. The forests around the precincts represent pubic hair. 3. The main pathway is called Sando, which is a homonym to Sando birth canal. 4. The main shrine is called Omiya, which uses the same kanji character as Shikyu womb. First of all, the Tori front gates represents a woman's legs. This is why some Tori gates are red, which represents women, life, and blood. The forest around the shrine area represents the pubic hair around the female genitalia. The path to the main shrine, which one walks after passing through the Tori gate, is called Sando, which is pronounced exactly the same as Sando birth canal. The shrine building itself, located in the back of the precincts, can also be called Omiya, which is a respectful way to refer to the womb. It is a bit surprising, but it's said that the bells that are rung at prayers are the testicles, the ropes attached to it are the male genitalia, and the money thrown into the offering box represent sperm. You might not want to remember this too much when you actually visit, but in other words, visiting a shrine Praying and coming out means they have been reborn. In a past video, I mentioned the wrong belief that women's blood are impure. I explained in that video too, but just as the supreme deity is a goddess, we can understand from how the shrines are made that women were originally cherished and worshipped in society. However again, Shinto is a mixture of myths and beliefs that were originally born in various regions. So not all shrines are in the form I introduced here. For example, Fushimi Nari has 1,000 Tori gates in a row. And some shrines such as Itsukushima Jinja Shrine have Tori gates that suddenly float in the sea. Or some places don't even have any shrine pavilions. So this idea does not apply to all the shrines in Japan. But I believe it would be a very fun way to visit them, imagining what each building, trees, and stones represents in its presence. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduce 5 facts that you may have not known about Japanese Shintoism. 1. There's no clear definition of Shinto. Shinto doesn't have founders or scriptures, so no one knows since when it has existed and how it was born. It is a religion that originated spontaneously in small countries throughout Japan in ancient times, and was gradually integrated with the establishment of the Yamato administration. It was carried on through generations, through myths and rituals. 2. Kojiki and Nihon Shoki have different content. Kojiki is a story written for the purpose of unifying domestic mythology and Nihon Shoki is a historical document written for foreign countries in order for Japan to be recognized as an independent nation. This is why although they are both books about myths and legends of Shintoism, they are written in different languages and have different content. 3. There are 8 million gods. Shinto is a polytheistic religion that believes in the existence of God in all phenomena, which is expressed as Yaoyorozu, 8 million gods, which simply means many. The supreme deity is a goddess that appears in Kojiki and Nihonshoki called Amaterasu. 4. Children are gifts from God until the age of 7. Because most children died before turning 7 years old in the past, Japanese people tried to take good care of children as if they were gods. This is why there are 9 rituals of celebrations for every child. 5. Shinto shrines represent a woman's womb. The names of each object and place in the shrine represents the female organs and womb. So visiting a shrine, praying, and coming out means they have been reborn. We can understand from how the shrines are made that women were originally cherished and worshipped in society. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards the original religion in Japan, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub-channel and membership through the link inside the description box. 
Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. 皆さんどうもありがとうございました。I sometimes receive questions asking, so Shogo, do you practice Shintoism? But this is a very difficult question because, again, there is no specific rules that you have to follow in order to become a Shintoist, right? There is no such thing as a Shintoist. And there, you don't have to, for example,、um, worship a certain god. To say that you do or don't believe in Shintoism. You could just have a kamidana. You guys might know about a kamidana. It's like a small shrine within the house, you know. You could just have that somewhere inside the house and you can pray towards it every day. And you could say that you believe in Shintoism, yes, or practice Shintoism. Or you might not do that, but if you still take your kids to a Shinto ritual, like I took my children to the Omiya Mairi or Hichigo san, that is considered Shintoism too. So it's a very, very difficult question for me to answer if I practice Shintoism or not. If I was suddenly asked that question, I would probably say no. But then, why do I take part in the rituals, right? Yeah, so I guess you can, you can probably understand from today's video, too, this is how ambiguous and、um, how, what should I say,、um, flexible, you can say, I guess, how flexible Shintoism can be.